Here at Tick Performance, we've got our LS head stud drill fixture, and Matt's gonna show us a quick rundown on how to use this drill fixture. Now, the procedure is gonna be very, very similar between a Gen 3 and a Gen 4, correct? Correct. Uh, what we've got here is a Gen 3 LS1? Gen 3 LS1 block, um, and I'm gonna perform the Gen 4 and the Gen 3 hole because on the older style Gen 3 block, they have two bolts in the deck surface that are the same as a Gen 4. Let's get started. This is the actual kit that you get when you uh, when you call in or when you place your order online. Uh, it includes the fixture plate, which has all the holes machined to drill and tap the block. You get locators that will slide down in the fixture and you can use your factory head bolts or studs, whatever you have laying around, to secure this plate to the block. And these are machined out to accept the factory bolt size as well as your upgraded half inch size. That way as you're drilling, and you run out of holes with factory thread, you're able to still use these with your upgraded stud or fastener of your choice in order to keep this plate secured to the block. Also, it includes both drills needed for the depth of the tap hole and the counter bore. It also includes the uh, polished finished spiral flute tap. What that does is it extracts chips as it taps, and when it extracts the chips, they're not falling into your hole we also have bushings that guide these. So these are hardened bushings. Uh, these drills in no way could ever damage this bushing. These are very hard bushings and they cannot be damaged by these high speed steel drills, which is another reason we chose the drills we chose. They have lock screws and you can use them if you want. It's not necessary. We put those in there for the people that, that would want to use them, but you simply install your bushing into the hole. And you can see here, it's got a notch for the screw you can install the screw and tighten it down just like that. So here's everything that's included in the kit and now I'm going to go over what you're going to need in addition to our kit. We do require that you have a few things. First thing you're going to need obviously is a good hand drill. Now you can use an air power drill, you can use a battery power drill, just basically any kind of, of drill with a half inch chuck. Some form of way to measure the hole depth. There, we're not going to pre-mark these drills. Uh, we're going to leave it up to the end user to measure their depth, mark the drill, and, and get their hole depth correct. So a good set of calipers, doesn't have to be anything ridiculously expensive, just a good set of calipers that work. And then you're gonna need some form of tap drive. And today I've got a 3 8 ratchet and an actual tap drive that slips onto the hex or to the square of the tap itself. And that's what I'll be using today. A good T-handle works well. Uh, I actually recommend a T-handle over this setup if you're doing an iron block. Lastly, uh, some, kind of, some kind of uh, cutting fluid. And all that's for is the tap. And honestly, on the aluminum blocks, you probably don't even need this. But I like to recommend that you have some sort of fluid for the tap itself. And that's pretty much everything you need. Something to be noted, we're working on a Gen 3 block today. So when you're doing the Gen 3 block, you need to measure one of these holes in the center and you also need to measure one of your two corner holes because they're two different lengths. Doing a Gen 4, one hole will cover all of them. Measure your holes and we're going to be measuring the depth. Do this with a uh, caliper and the first measurement we're going to take is the counter bore itself and you're going to take your extended, your, the end of your caliper and you're going to go down until you fill the top of those threads. Uh, so you'll just hold it against the wall of the hole until you fill the threads. Right there they are. Take your caliper down and record your measurement. As you can see here it's around 1.213. Uh, so 1.2 would be fine. Just, uh, just to round things off. And then we're going to measure the bottom of the hole. And what we're going to do is measure the side of the hole and not the very center of the hole because we want to know, we want to measure our drill from the from the, the diameter instead of the point. So we'll come down, we'll fill the threads, come down the side of the threads just like you did the counter bore hole until you find depth. Then take your recording, as you can see, is in the 2.75 range, 2.750, I'm sorry. So record that number. So here's our shallower hole, being the Gen 4. This is the depth of the counter bore and the depth of the threaded hole. And here is the Gen 3 hole, depth of the counter bore and depth of the threaded hole. Great. Go ahead. 
Okay, so the next step is going to be to install the drill fixture itself. And we've machined these guide rings to go in the block. And the reason we make these is because the factory ring has a smaller ID than what we're making here. And it's actually the same size as the tap is. So when you go to run the tap in, these two holes with the factory rings, um, it threads those parts as well. And to avoid that, we just machined some rings to locate the plate fixture ourselves. Now that it's in place, we can take our bolt adapters, slide them into the fixture. And there's no specific order required for this. I'm just gonna place a few in. And then take you some old crusty head bolts if you've got them laying around. And then just tighten them into place. Just like that. So after we've got the fixture secured to the block, <clears throat> I'm gonna take our first drill bushing, which is our tapped hole size, which is a 27 64th, and we're gonna insert it into the plate. And then you can use your screw to make sure that it doesn't try to come out. Using our calipers, we're gonna add the thickness of this plate and bushing top, which is an inch and a half from the, from the bottom of the plate to the top of the bushing. We're gonna add that to our previous measurement of hole depth for the tap hole size, because this is the size for the tap hole. And when you add those two numbers together, you come up with four and a quarter of an inch. And see here, we're measuring from this portion of the bit instead of the tip, and we're measuring four and a quarter inches to our mark. And this is something you have to be kind of cautious about because this bit will try to just take off because it's cutting such a light piece of material away that it tries to pull the bit to the bottom. So the best thing to do is to run the bit at full speed and don't apply down pressure. Actually kind of just kind of let it hover until it gets to your mark. <clears throat> Okay, next step is gonna to be to remove this bushing. I'm gonna give it a shot of air to get some of the chips out. Install our drill bushing for our counter bore. Install the screw. Again, we're using the same method to measure our drill and mark it from the shoulder or from the outer edge to make your mark. Again, this is inch and a half, and you're gonna add that to the total that you came up with when you measured the hole. Again, wide open throttle and very light on the cut. Now you can remove the bushing. Again, use an air to clean the hole out. Make sure you have the hole very clean for this next process. Now comes the tap. So the way this works, you can see this tap's not going to go through this bushing. This tap has a precision ground shaft on it that is perfectly straight perfectly cylindrical. And the way that we do this is we slide our guide over the tap, just like this, and then insert it into the hole. Again, installing your screw. Now using a T-handle, or in my case, a tap socket, we are going to drive the tap to depth. So take your time and get it started at the top of the hole. And then once you feel comfortable, just run the tap to full depth. And with the spiral tap, 
you don't have to worry about the chips falling in the hole, getting in the way, because as we cut this hole, it's pulling those chips out, and we don't have to worry about running the tap into shavings. I can feel now that we're at the bottom of the hole. So now I'm carefully going to start backing up. And if you feel it snag, just come back forward until it's free. Taps all the way out of the hole and remove our screw, remove our bushing and tap. You can see the tap still looks great. And then again, using some chop air, clean the chips out. And it's that simple. So the four holes you see at the bottom, they're not for Gen 3, Gen 4 blocks. This is for your aftermarket block that has a six bolt pattern. Um, and what they allow you to do is to open them up from eight millimeter to three eighths. And eight millimeter comes standard on the LSX block, RHS. And I believe it comes standard on some of the Dart offerings as well. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any more questions regarding this or any other products we manufacture, uh, you can give us a call at 336-719-0599. You can go online, check out TickPerformance.com, or you can shoot an email to support at TickPerformance.com. We're always happy to help.